Hello everyone, I'm Xu Dongsun from University of Illinois. I'm here to present our paper, Testing Confusion Changes in Context to Prevent Production Failures. Nowadays, confusions are continuously deployed and they are changed in frequent diffs. Here's a confusion diff example which changed the value of this confusion parameter from false to true to enable the authorization feature in HDFS. Such confusion diffs are committed to production system hundreds to thousand times a day. Confusion changes induce two types of production system failures. First, dormant bugs in the system are exposed by valid confusion changes. Second, erroneous confusion values causing unexpected behavior. We present C test as a new type of software test to detect both types of failure inducing confusion changes. CTS complements existing software testing. It is hard for existing software testing to cover all possible configuration values and their combinations due to combinator explosion. As a workaround, existing techniques only test a few representative values, for example, the default values. But production system configurations may not be tested, and they are the ones that matter. CTS focuses on testing production system configurations instead of for open spot configurations. When configuration changes, we test it against the code. CTS also complements static configuration validation. Configuration validation frameworks are based on the correctness rules. And automatic techniques have been proposed to learn correctness rules. But static validation cannot detect bugs exposed by value value changes because the root cause is outside the configuration. And it's hard to codify and maintain all correctness rules. CTS checks the program behavior without the need for rules. Our work makes the following contributions. First, we present CTS, a new perspective for detecting failure-inducing configurations. The key idea of CTS is to connect production system configurations to software tests. CTS checks the program behavior against the configurations to be deployed. And in this way, CTS detects both erroneous configuration values and bugs exposed by valid configuration changes. Second, we present a methodology of generating CTS from existing software tests. We generated thousands of CTS for file cloud system with this methodology. Third, we present extensive evaluations on the effectiveness of CTS in different scenarios. We define CTS as a software test parameterized by configuration parameters. A CTS is run by instantiating input configuration parameters with concrete values, for example, the values to be deployed in production. CTS exercises the system codes and observes program behavior. A CTS can be a unit test, an integration test, or a system test, depending on the usage. Here's one CTS example we generated from Hadoop test suits. I will explain later how we generate it. This CTS first loads the production configuration into the configuration object and use the production configuration to construct a server and call the authorized method of the server. If a DevOps engineer change the value of this auth configuration parameter from false to true in production. Then in the authorized method, the true branch depending on this configuration parameter will be executed and a bug in this branch will be triggered and lead Hadoop to fail in production. This CTS can detect these dominant bugs exposed by valid configuration changes by testing the authorized method with the changed configuration value before it goes into production. Here's another CTS example we generate from HBase test. This CTS, similar as the previous one, will use the production configuration to construct the RPC scheduler, run the scheduler, and assert on the scheduler's behavior. If a DevOps engineer changes the value of this factor parameter to two, which is the out of range error in production, then it will cause significant performance issue in HBase without throwing any exception or raise any warnings. This CTS can detect this erroneous value because this erroneous confusion value will significantly impair the scheduler's behavior and such an unexpected behavior will fail the assertion here. 
before it goes into production. CTS can be used in different multiple ways. First, CTS can be used for checking entire system configuration. If all CTS for the system passes, then the entire system configuration passes. Second, CTS can be used for checking a configuration diff. Previous studies show that uh, many configuration changes are very small, like two lines of revisions. So for each configuration diff, we only rerun the relevant CTS. Third, CTS can be used for checking a configuration fail, because the configuration fail is a diff over the default system configuration. When using CTS to check a configuration diff, we rerun only CTS that exercise change the configuration parameters. More concretely, assume we have five configuration parameters, P1 to P5, and four CTS, T1 to T4 for these five parameters. Each CTS exercises some configuration parameters, like uh, for example, the T1 here exercises P1 and P2. And this configuration diff checks the value of P1 and P2. For this configuration diff, our CTS2 will select uh, the CTS that exercise that change the configuration parameter. And in this particular example, we select a T1 and a T2, which are half of all the CTS we have. Then the CTS2 will run the selected CTS with the new configuration values. The CTS2 is built on top of a Maven, and it will use Maven commands to compile and run CTS. CTS can be transformed from existing tests. Software and developer or the engineers can also write new CTS, just like how they write and maintain existing software by tests. Meanwhile, mature software projects have high quality test codes. For example, in our evaluated system, unit tests can achieve more than 70% statements and the method coverage. And even higher coverage number is reported in commercial projects. So our insight is to reuse a well-engineered test logic and oracles by transforming existing tests into C-tests. Transforming existing tests into C-tests takes three steps. First, since C-tests is run by instantiating input configuration parameters, we need to instrument the configuration APIs to identify the configuration parameters exercised by existing tests. Second, since a C-test can be run with production configuration. We need to connect the existing test to the production configuration. To do so, we intercept the configuration APIs. Last step, the test could have assumptions on configurations, and the test will report false alarms when assumptions are broken. So we need to respect both explicit and implicit test assumptions on configurations. I will walk you through these three steps. For the first step, we instrument the configuration APIs to identify the configuration parameters exercised by test. I will use Hadoop as an example to illustrate uh, how we do the instrumentation. The instrumentation is specific to Hadoop, but, but the idea is applicable to other studied systems. Hadoop uses a key value configuration store to maintain all its configuration internally. And there are two basic uh, configuration APIs. First, a get API which is used for reading the configuration value for configuration parameter from this video configuration store. And the set API, which is used for writing a configuration value for configuration parameter to this key value store. The get API and the set API have some variations for different type castings, for example, get ints or get boolean. All these variations will eventually call these two APIs. Such a way to manage configuration is widely used in other mature software projects. Let's focus on Get API. And here's a test example in Hadoop using the configuration Get API to get the value of the authorization parameter. So inside the Get API, we print, we log out the parameter. And by running all the tests for once and passing the test log, we can tell which configuration parameters are exercised during the test run. The second step is to intercept the configuration API to make the, to make the test exercise the production configuration. Hadoop, in Hadoop, the key value configuration store is initialized with this static block. This static block will first load the core default configuration file, which contains the default configuration. Then you load the core set configuration file, 
which contains the test configuration. Each loading step will overwrite the previously loaded value. So we add one more loading step here to load the COSI test configuration file, which contains the production configuration to overwrite the default and the test configuration. And in this way, the key value configuration store will be initialized as a production configuration. And the test will exercise the production configuration by calling the get API. The last step is to respect test assumptions on configurations. Tester can explicitly reset configuration values and also implicitly assume configuration values. Tester will report false alarms if these assumptions are broken. And here's the test example in Hadoop. This test is used for testing the X-frame option, X-frame feature for, non, for name nodes. This test first sets the dfs.xframe.enabled configuration parameter to true, which is an explicit assumption. Because this setting enables the X-frame feature and the subsequent test logic is based on the assumption that the X-frame feature is turned on. Later, the test gets the value of the X-frame option and observe that uh, the extreme option should end with similar region. This assertion is an implicit assumption because extreme option actually comes from another configuration parameter, dfs.xframe.value, whose default value is similar region. So this assertion is hard coded for the default value of this configuration parameter. And this assertion will fail when running with other different valid value for this configuration parameter, which is a false alarm. To recognize the explicit assumption, we instrument the set API by logging out the conversion parameter, just like what we did for the get API. And for implicit assumption, we run the test with different but valid values for the same parameter. And we see whether the tester report false alarm. If a tester report false alarm, then we know there's an implicit assumption on this conversion parameter in this test. And to respect test assumptions and configurations in this particular example, we will not use this test to test these two configuration parameters to avoid breaking the test logic. I know that this test can be still used to test other X-frame configuration parameters, which are not affected by these two assumptions. We can also optionally rewrite the test to remove the implicit assumption to remove the assumptions from the test. And in this particular example, we can rewrite the hardcoded assertion to replace the similar region with the actual value of DFS docs from dot value. By doing so, this assertion is not hardcoded for this parameter anymore. And uh, we can still use this test to test this configuration parameter without uh, breaking the test logic. We applied our CTS generation methodology to five cloud systems to generate CTS. We first selected the 392 configuration parameters exercised in existing software tests from Hadoop Common, SDFS, HBase, Luxio, and Zookeeper. We instrumented their configuration APIs using 24 to 130 lines of codes, which is certain in one to three classes. We generated 7,000 CTES for all the selected configuration parameters. And we rewrote 102 CTES by changing 190 lines of codes to assess the opportunity of manual rewriting efforts. Our evaluation answers three questions. First, how effectively do CTES prevent confusion induced failures? To, evaluate, to answer this question, we evaluate CTES on 64 real world confusion induced failures, and CTES detected 62. Of them. Second, how effectively do CTES detect diverse types of misconfigurations? We synthesized over 1,000 misconfiguration values, and 72% of them were detected as generated CTES. Third, how do CTES detect misconfigurations in advance? We evaluate CTES on 92 configuration files collected from public Docker images, and CTES discovered 10 misconfigurations in seven configuration files. I will focus on the first evaluation part. To evaluate CTES effectiveness on configuration-induced failures, 
Expected 64 failure confusion induced failures, including 13 software bugs exposed by value confusion changes and 51 LE confusion values and evaluate CTAS on them. For each confusion induced failure, we generate a CTAS with the methodology aforementioned. And to evaluate how test rewriting improves CTAS, know that we only generate a CTAS in the reported system version. And to evaluate uh, how we generate, how we, how test rewriting improve the effectiveness, we use the test rewriting patterns described in paper to, re to rewrite some tests. We use gene only to refer to the generated C test, and we use gene plus rewrite to refer to all the C tests, including the rewriting ones. For the 13 software bugs, our generated C tests detect 10 of them, and with the rewriting, one CTAS, we are able to detect 11 of them. Two bugs are missed by CTAS because the code triggering the bug is not covered in the test, in the reported version. So we are not able to generate CTAS to cover these two, two bugs. We also compare CTAS with two existing misconfusion detection tools, spellcheck and pcheck. Spellcheck performs step checking for confusion values and pcheck automatically generates checkers for confusion parameters in system code. None of the certain bugs exposed by valid confusion change can be detected by spell check and P -check or, P or P check because the confusion values here are correct. So they can pass all the checkers of spell check and P check. And for the 51 erroneous confusion values, our generated C test detects 41 of them. And with the writing 10 C tests, we detect all the, all the erroneous values. Spell check detects three and P check detects 41. To, under the, to understand the results better, we look into the 51 erroneous values and uh, break them into six subcategories. Spell check focuses on performing type checking and it detects all the value type errors. But unfortunately, only three failures are caused by type error. P check missed uh, 10 erroneous values because P check has a post deployment uh, configuration validation tool. This allows operations with side effects and uh, cannot handle external dependency, while well, those are actually necessary for detecting some of the erroneous confusion values. CTAS as a pre-deployment tool is not constrained by those and can perform testing more thoroughly. To summarize, for the 64 failures, our generated CTAS can detect almost 80% of them, and with writing 11 CTAS, according to the test pattern described in our paper, we can detect all but two failures here. CTAS has the following limitations. First, CTAS effectiveness relies on the quality of the test. The two missing cases are due to lack of effective tests, and one missing case can be de detected by a CTAS generated in the latest test suite. Second, CTAS generation methods are neither sound or complete. It could have both false positives and false negatives. However, in evaluation, we didn't observe false positives. Third, CTAS do not bridge the gap between testing environments and production environments. To conclude, I have presented CTAS a new perspective for detecting failure inducing configurations, and the key idea is to connect production system configurations to software tests. CTAS detects both erroneous configuration values and bugs exposed by valid configuration changes. I will also show how to generate CTAS from existing software tests, and the evaluation shows the CTAS is effective in detecting confusion induced failures in different scenarios. We release our code and dataset at GitHub. Thanks for your attention.